Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, what's good, y'all? Y'all know what it is. I'm still sitting here at work right now, you know what I'm saying? Waiting for a couple of trucks to come through so I can knock this out and, and go home. But it was something that I ran across on, on Facebook today that was really, really dope. It was super dope, you know what I'm saying? The other day, I did a live on um, Facebook, YouTube, and all of those other things. And um, my mentor, my big brother, Eddie OJ, he called in, you know? So we chopped it up for a bit. And, um, you know, Eddie OJ is a, 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 he's a real emotional type of brother. You know, he, he doesn't bite his tongue. He speaks his mind. So, you know, on the platform that we were on, it wasn't like it was geared toward any particular age group or, you know, there, there were no boundaries. So, you know, profanity was okay. And now, me knowing OJ, the way that I know him, he could go in, he could curse like a sailor, but he didn't do that on the show. But a few times he did use a couple of shits and fucks you know what I'm saying? But not, nothing was off limits. So you had a few people go into the comments and start saying stuff like, you're not, because OJ calls himself God's poet because he also does gospel music. So people went into the comments to say, you're not God's poet, you're cussing. And you know, it just got out of hand. So, you know, OJ, like I said, he's an emotional person that doesn't bite his tongue. And he responded and it became it, 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 it became a, the snowball effect, you know, just going back and forth. And it was it was pretty ugly. Now, what I'm about to show you, this is why I call Eddie OJ the Black Fonz. This is why this brother is my mentor. This is the OJ that I wanted to be when I was young. Classy, articulate. Um, it was just super dope. And I want to share this message with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Check, a, check this out. This is Eddie OJ. I want y'all to listen to the message. Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Eddie OJ, Clientel Brothers. I just wanted to take a moment, um, you know, to clear the air on some things about me, you know. Just clear the air, clear the air, because um, I was on my brother's uh, show the other day that me and him talked about. He was giving me flowers, you know, he always does that. That's my man, Mikey D, Mikey Destruction. Love him to death, man. But I just wanted to clear the air on the, the little things that popped up on his on his show. <laughs> you know, it was about me. You know, I'm not God. I don't walk on water. You know what I'm saying? I got my vices. I got things I do wrong. I'm not what I'm supposed to be. I'm just so much better than I used to be. So with some problems with the way I was speaking at times, and I guess the person thought, oh, he's not this, he's not that, or whatever. I'm not a saint. Like I said, I do gospel music. I do gospel hip-hop. One of the best at it, too. Invite me to the church and you'll find out. Because I got a story. But not only that, I'm, I'm a prolific rapper, you know, with, with my brothers. With my brothers. So, I asked Will Seville. He was at a show with me. He was selling my CDs while I was still on stage. People were asking him for my music. Because when I put that God thing together, I know how to do it. But that don't mean I'm, 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 I walk on water because I don't. You know what I'm saying? I got vices, I got problems, I got things I work on all the time. But the same people that will try to throw you under the bus, they got stuff they do in the dark. You know what I'm saying? Same people. It's not about that, it's just about, you know, I never said I'm better than anybody. I always just say I'm the coolest. I got brothers that, that out rap me, I learned so much from them. You know what I'm saying? And it's all good. It, that's not what it's about. It's not about being... And when I call somebody, I said, you hating on me because you make a negative comments about me on the podcast with a brother giving me flowers. Don't mean you hating because what I got to hate you for because you got more money than me. That's not what hate is all the time. 
haters just come out negative on on a on, on a podcast that's not a negative podcast. And you say, oh, you wasn't this, you wasn't that. I never said I was this and that. That's not me. I'm just Eddie OJ. I just started the clientele brothers. I can give the history on that. I created the whole group. I created the whole group, you know. I had Steady B, then after Steady B, you know, the, the I mean, only time the DJ gets a whole lot of, of, of mention is when he's just the dopest ass dude ever, like Quicksilver and T-Bird and those guys. Those guys were so amazing, like Flash and them, you know, Theodore. When you're that hot, you that hot, you, you could ride with the, even if the rapper's that hot, you ride with them, you know, because you got that much talent. So you got Quicksilver. This dude is amazing. Some dudes are just amazing. Quicksilver's with, with the super lovers. Some of these guys, they take attention from the rappers. They so dope. So don't hate on me because, you know, I created something and you, you feel like now, you know, somebody says something about 60 year old rappers. Who cares, man? Everybody makes music. When you're good at something, like I told Mikey, and Mikey always talks about it. You only retire at something when you're no longer good at it. I'm not talking about city jobs. You know, that that don't count. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do these productions. I do production. Who wants to do that? I'm talking about musically. You never retire musically. Look at Mick Jagger and the Stones. Look at Melly Mel. Look at Kaz and them. Do they, do, does, does Rakim supposed to stop rapping because, oh, Rakim said I'm 60 now. Dude, I hate records. And... and, and and as far as recording records, I got gospel songs that people buy every time I go anywhere I go. I got preachers who stand behind me. I got preachers who get on my tail because they say, hey, this is what you do. If you see somebody and you they're not looking right to you or whatever, you hit them up. You take them in the back room. You don't come on somebody's podcast and oh, you, you, know, you ain't this and you a scam. I'm a scam? I mean, you know how many preachers running churches that's going with people in the congregations doing all kinds of stuff? Got babies in the congregation. I'm not a scam. I'm not God. I just had a message. I'm just a minister of music in, in, in the rap game. I could put it together. I could put it together better than anybody you ever met. Talking about Christ at Seville. He was there on the set. He was like, this guy's like a star where he's at. You know, people down here, I'm, man, I've, I've been on many stages with many pastors. So it's not about, you know, about me thinking, I don't walk on water. I say that a million times. And as far as the thing about me uh, dropping it down and bragging on L, I always knew L was one of the best rappers. It's not about because he called me. I never spoke on LL and asked Mikey D because we covered this all the time. I never spoke on LL because I felt like he didn't like me. Whatever the problem was, he never mentioned clientele. He mentioned Mickey Mouse groups, like even little groups that they never had a show with. But he asked me to be down. You know, he said he asked Mike. That's cool. Maybe he didn't remember when he asked me. You know, Mike was a young guy. Mike didn't want nobody down. Why Mike didn't want L? He didn't want Razo. We talk about this. I talk to these guys every day. Those are my brothers, man. You know? And shout out to everybody that's listening. But those are my dudes, man. I got love for my people. I'm not scared to go on and say, yeah, I love Mikey D. I'm not scared to say I love Will Seville. I'm not scared to say I love Easy Eli White. I'm not scared to say I love my sister, my mama. Some people can't do that. Some people will never do that. Say you love your rap homeboy. I could say that all day. Like people say, I love Lady Miz and Ray. I'm not scared to say that. Well, I say I'm a, I say I'm a crybaby. Miz called me a crybaby. But I'm not going to let nobody harm me. You know, that's just an emotion. That's an emotion for me. The crying thing is love. <laughs> but as far as the clientele, brothers, for somebody to come on and say, I'll tell you the real history. What real history? I created the group. I bought Will Seville and Eli in. I, LL asked me. Mike asked me. I, no, Mike didn't ask me. I recruited Mike. I recruited Will Seville, too. They, they, I, and and he, they didn't ask me. I'm just saying, but Steady B, I went, I, well, I recruited everybody. So I'll give you, without hating, I'm just saying, I'm just responding to some things that were said about me. I'll give you the clean version of the clientele. What is the clean version? I carried you. I made you where people knew who you were. 
I was at EOJ. I asked a villain them. When I asked them to be down, they were honored because of the things I had the clientele name out there. I created one of the best names ever. You know, it's not about, and I don't talk about that. But since somebody's shooting darts at me, I just address it. I don't want nobody to be scared to comment on the post because people be like, I'm not getting in that. That's a, a beef thing. No, say what you got to say. This is life. You got one life, one love. Say what you got to say. I mean, people saying stuff about me. It's not about that. Just like Lotto said. Lotto said, yo, you know, it came at Ed like that, you know, and Ed would do gospel. So if he got on there and he was cussing, people was judging him. And he said, I get it to a degree. But that's who Ed is. Ed, I could do gospel, man. I'm not. I'm not God. If I cut, if somebody hit me. You know, you got so many people out here cussing. And I had a pastor offer me liquor, man. You got these a human being. We human beings. At the end of the day, we are human beings, man. That's all that we are. You know. So, oh, you, man, you don't look right. What I look like? What I look like? I had a drink to you. So you convict me on 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 the podcast where a dog is talking about me. So what? Come I mean, meet people drink. You got people do all kinds of things, cheat on their wife, cheat on, do this, go with men, do on the DL, and then, so you look at me and you judging me. And judgment is not for man. Judgment is for God. The Bible says, "Judge ye not." You know what I'm saying? So I can't. I don't need a dude judging me on. You, all you got to do, you know, if you if you see OJ and he's saying something you don't like, I can't stand this cat. I turned it off. I had a dude tell me that. I know him very well. From something I was doing before, he said, man, you seem like you wasn't right. That's all good. I, that's fine. We humans. I know a lot of dudes we came up with that was doing rap and all that. When we was doing it, they all dead and in prison and jail. Dead. A lot of them. Got AIDS, got this, got that. Come on. So you hope people, if you love somebody like that and you see me and I'm off, you say, I think it ain't looking right. You know, if you see me and I look like I'm off, call me, man. Don't go on. You don't have to diss me on social media. Come on. If you know me. I mean, dude don't know me. I don't care what he say. I don't care what a dude that don't know me say. And as far as the hip hop and the age limit, there's no age limit on good music. Shit, man, all of us, and there's a cuss right there. I condemn for that. Yeah, but there is no age limit on, on, on writing skills and writing ability. Maya Angelou wrote till she died. She was 80 something years old. So if somebody would have took it and wrapped it on the record, I mean, there, there, there's no age limit on ability. <laughs> Same person condemning me was uh, DJing. So you quit DJing. Doing what you do and tell me, come. If, if, only time you're no good as something like I ever tell Mikey D. The only time you quit, I've told him, been telling him this the last 10 years. He's been waiting for his major breakthrough. He's been waiting patiently, not dissing nobody. A lot of times I told him, man, diss people. You know? He's like, uh, we all don't have the same personality. A lot of people don't like mine, that's fine. I don't like a lot of people either that think they bougie because they worked somewhere and they got money. Who cares? So what? It don't matter how much money you got. It imagines, it, it matters the character of your heart. You can be the richest person in the world. Look at Kanye. He runs around think the world revolves. He's like, I should be God. I'm God. I'm yay God and all of this. Now Kim don't want him. He want to die. You know what I'm saying? Who cares? What does Kim say about Kanye. He's the greatest rapper in all the world. He's this, he's that. But I hate his personality. And that's the thing about a lot of people. They think because they got money, they got this, they got that. They got the worst personalities in the world. So you don't have to, nobody has to judge me. I'm going to do old school till I die. Right there with Chucky Chuck, Mikey D, Will Seville, Lotto, right there with them all of us. Sedan right there. Till we, till we, till they roll me out of here. I don't know when that's going to be. Could be next year. I might not even make next year. I don't know that. I roll with the old school. That's what we do. Old school records, best records ever been made. Tell Rock Cam to quit. <laughs> Tell him to quit. Best rap ever lived. Tell LL to quit. One of the best rappers ever lived. Tell Kaz to quit. Tell them all to quit because you, oh, you're too old to rap. Dudes made a living off of doing that. When they quitting? When they gonna quit? They gonna quit. They only quit when you're no longer good at what you do. Before I go, 
I'm going to read this because I always forget everybody and I wanted to shout some people out because they never tell me and that. And that was my clear to air. I wanted Mike to do it. Mike don't have to do everything for me. That's my dog. Shout out to Will Seville, Mikey D, Sheila Gray, Des Nation, Silver Fox, my dog. That dude's in his 60s still putting it down hard as, hard as concrete. Hard as concrete, Fox Boogie. You my dog, my man. Shout out to Sedan, MB Lee, MB5. Johnny Quest, shout out to Travis Jacobs, Mike Action, LL Cool J, of course. Shout out to uh, Lady Miz and Ray, because of old school rules. Shout out to Summer Rain, Sunshine, Clientele Forever, Clientele Brothers, Clientele Cartel, Clientele Brothers, CB4L. That's for life. That's till we die. That's what we do. I am talking about, you talking somebody talking about close to 60? Say close to 80, man. I'll take the 80 year old people when we be out there rapping and having fun and dancing. You don't die, you live till you die. Come on, man, you serious? Shout out to Divine Can Do, Infinity Machine, one of the greatest groups ever lived. Like I said, Leo MB. Shout out from, from the Ground Productions, from the ground to up. Chucky Chuck, that's my brother. Because a lot of times people will talk about you, and if you ask them for 50 cent, they wouldn't give it to you. Chuck can give me 50 cent if I need it. Feel me? <laughs> Shout out to Katie, my lady. That's my baby. Shout out to my father, Harold Williamson. Kurt Digger. I mean, Kurt Digger's my dog, you know? Shout out to Komar Harrington. He always tells me, hey, please remember me. Got you, Komar. Shout out to James Earl. LLJ Chill. That's my dog. He made my logo. For the clientele shirts that I'm about to post. Shout out to Big Joe Ray who hits me every day when, when I say something. Shout out to Larry G from the TNT crew. That's where I started at. Mad love for Larry G. That's my man. Always and forever. Shout out to Darlene. She know who she is. I comment with Darlene all the time. My son Snook, man. My son Mr. Cole. Shout out to the rapper Magical Five. Shout out to the Cold Crush Brothers. Shout out to the professional five, who I never say nothing about. But today I'm feeling different about all that. I feel different. <laughs> and then when I was told I never make records, I got two gospel CDs that I've been doing for the past 10 years. I do that all the time. Everywhere I get invited all over the place. And then people hit me up. Oh, this guy got your CD. Man, you got another one. You got that. Girl just told me the other day I need four of your CDs. Wow. But I never made a record, though. Ask Seville. Ask Mikey D. Ask my father. Ask Harold Williamson. He's been at my shows. They've been there. I was at show New Year's Eve doing gospel. So to hold me under judgment because you heard a, 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 a interview where we was all talking trash? Oh, yeah. Somebody take the cusses out of my mouth because I do that sometimes. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm no perfect person. I got a long way to go. But on signing off, man, it's Eddie OJ, Clientel Brothers, Clientel Cartel, Clientel Brothers CB4L, Mikey D show, one-on-one -on -one with Mikey D that he said I inspired. I thank him for that. You know, I thank him for that, for doing that. He's been bigging me up like that all the time. That's why I'll big him up all the time. That's that. Me and Mike been talking every day for so many years, so many years. Some people got problems with that. I guess they're like, ha, 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 ha. Some people want attention, you know. Maybe they'll get it. Maybe they'll get it, you know. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Ain't nobody out here trying to be famous, man. We out here just trying to make music and, and, and have a good time and enjoy the rest of our lives. Who knows how long that's going to be. It's not about, I'm, oh, you're famous now. You think you're famous. I don't think nothing about being famous, bro. If I thought about being famous... Ah, that's why I quit because deals wasn't happening and people was letting me down and promised me this and promised me that. Then I missed the biggest show in my life with, with C. Devon. That's why I stepped out. I was like, yo, this ain't working for me, man. And I still backed up, Mike. I still went all over the place with him. It's not about quitting, man, because not being this and that. It's life, man. It's life. You enjoy life and then you just move on and do what you got to do. One love. Eddie O.J. Ed Will, a.k.a. Clientel Brothers, Clientel Cartel, Clientel Brothers, CB4L. Peace, love y'all. So now y'all see what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen? You, you see what I'm talking about now, ladies and gentlemen? Now y'all understand why 
I call him the Black Fonz. If y'all remember Happy Days, Fonz was the coolest dude in the cast, the coolest dude in the crew. That's the OJ that is my mentor. That's the OJ that I wanted to be. You can't pass judgment. Judgment is for God. He said it. He said it. You know what I'm saying? Eddie OJ, salute to you, man. You always number one in my heart. You heard? You that dude, man. And thank you for all of the guidance and all of your inspiration and motivation that you still continue to give me, bro. Yo, I got nothing but love for you, Eddie OJ. Look, my, my, my partner in crime right here keeps walking in and out while I'm talking, but it's okay. He got a job to do, and I got a job to do. But I thought it was important for me to take time out to share that footage with y'all because I thought it was so on point and it came straight from his heart. So, so ladies and gentlemen, thanks for checking that out. Check out my brother, Eddie OJ. You already know, he's on Instagram, you know, at OJ. Eddie OJ on Instagram. Holla at your boy, clientele brothers for life, and we out of here. Peace.